Rav Cook selected letters. We're in chapter 2. The topic is Torah versus other religions. Preface to letter 9. Rav Cook once more comforts Rav Milstein and continues to urge him to help his wayward sons in any way he can. Letter 9. By the grace of God, the holy city of Jaffa may be built and established 19th of year 5668. This is the 20th of May 1908. Peace and blessing from the Holy One, from the Holy Land, to my beloved friend, the Rabbi distinguished in Torah and true awe of God, our teacher Rabbi Duber Milstein. May he live a long and good life. Amen. It has been many days since your letter reached me and gladdened my heart. As with faithful lovers, I was happy to see your precious words, but I was also greatly saddened by your anguish, my friend, over your children. I've been intending to write to you for a long time now, but my work prevented me from doing so. Until just now, I squeezed in a short moment to write a little. Yes, my friend, I understand well your heart's grief. But if you think, like the great majority of Torah scholars, that in our times it is fitting to abandon those children who have been turned from Torah ways and the faith by the raging currents of the times, I state emphatically that this is not God's way. As the Tosafot write in Sanhedrin 26b, Savoche Hechashud, uh, the Hechashud, the suspect, the morally loose, a suspect in all matters. There is a, an opinion that one who is suspected of unchastity is not disqualified as a witness because he is, as if he were unwilling, his desire overcoming him. And similarly, it is also written in the Tosafot Gitin 41b, Savoche Kofin, that since the maidservant persuades them to commit spiritual harlotry, they are considered to have been unwilling. The same applies to the bad maid servant of the flow of time to whom heaven gave dominion, until such time as she is utterly destroyed and vanishes like smoke. Uh, just, uh, I was interrupted for a moment, I might go back a sentence. She uses all her many enchantments to persuade our young children to harlotry. They are coerced in every sense of the word, and heaven forbid us from judging the compelled as we do the self-willed. There is, then, future and hope for all of them. The inner soul of Israel's holiness is hidden in the depths of their hearts, and evident in the many good characteristics found among them. And the only holds evil grasped in their hearts were on the side of their inner tendency to good and loving kindness. For this reason, when they were shown the injustices perpetrated in their view by the system of government, they become fight, became fighters for the common good. Even though they are, from every aspect, totally mistaken, they cannot at any rate be compared to the wicked, who act only in accordance with their animal appetites without any righteous goal. And if we do not trample these fallen, but rather draw them as close to us as possible, then, when the current of time is overthrown, they will see the great error, in, error inherent in the idea for the sake of which they abandon their homes. They will then be ready for repentance and good, and as a consequence the coming generations will be prepared for the greatest eminence and exaltedness, maintaining the glory of Israel and in the light of God, which shines in them in all its warmth and strength. Therefore, in my opinion, my advice to you is that you, are, that you certainly are under no obligation to burden yourself with anything more than what you are able to do. But in as far as you have the ability, bring them closer, with help towards their livelihood and their basic needs. This will give you the opportunity to express some sensible moral instructions in your letters. For it is an established covenant that words coming from the heart have, have their effect, whether great or little, and even the little is very precious. The principal way to instruct such young, such young people at this time is to awaken them so that they do not abandon the love for their people from, from which they were hewn, and so that they will not mistakenly imagine that they will attain an honourable and worthy position in life through, intim, through intimacy with foreigners, who, prefer, who befriend them only when it is in their interest and afterwards, at a time of failure, are glad to see their downfall. And by means of awakening a love for their people, the feeling of faith and inclination to holiness hidden in the depths of the Jewish soul will be set ablaze. And this can bring about a mending of deeds which may result in the cure of complete repentance. And we must not ever despair of any of the holy seed. And a myrtle, though it stands among reeds, is still a myrtle and is called a myrtle. This is from a footnote is Sanhedrin 44a. 
The text reads, The text reads, Israel has sinned. Rav Abba Barazab just said, Even though the people have sinned, they are still called Israel. Rav Abba said, Thus people say, A myrtle, though it stands among reeds, is still a myrtle. You should know that this repentance will come through intellectual acknowledgement and a longing for justice. Following the great and wide gap breached in contemporary times, even though we do not have to imagine it as a picture of terrible sadness and awesome dread, as ordinary penitence is perceived, but rather simple wisdom, in the same way that one corrects a mathematical error when the right answer becomes evident. Still, it is understood that it is completely impossible for the heart not to be moved at the sight of the crooked and false road on which we went astray. Each of us, according to our own individual levels. In any case, since everyone who has joined the battalions of the war of our age on either side did so in accordance with their own reason, when they return they will also return by reason, and a reason return is truly a return out of love, which is very strong and honourable. And of this it has been said, and to them that turn from transgressions in, ya- in Jacob, this is from Isaiah 59.20, The transgressors and the rebels, who are not prisoners of passion but of misdirected reason, will will return at a highly exalted degree. For this reason there is great hope for the vast majority of our children, so we must hold them and not forsake them. And it shall come to pass, that instead of that which was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, You are the sons of a living God. From Hoshea 2.1 I conclude in a blessing and great love, as is befitting your fine soul. Your good friend blesses you and solicits your, solicits your well-being, that you may see the goodness of the Lord in the Holy Land, and the rejoicing of God's nation in it, quickly in our days. Amen. Humbly yours, Avraham Yitzchak Cook, Igrot 138.